The 26th of January is Australia Day, but is it Australia's most controversial public holiday? So whether you spend the day at home with your family or out with your mates, having a bunning snag or a barbecue by the beach, have you ever wondered how we got here? So it's no mistake that Aboriginals have called Australia home for upwards of over 60,000 years. Europeans, however, knew it as a landmass in the south that they called Terra Australis Incognita, known as the Unknown Southland. So it was actually the Dutch that first came to Australia. So in 1606, a Dutch explorer landed on the west side of the Cape York Peninsula and charted about 300 kilometers of the coastline. Between 1606 and 1664, 29 other Dutch navigators have explored the west and southern coast of Australia throughout the 17th century and called it New Holland. The Dutch, however, chose not to stay on this land because they saw it as dry and barren and they had seen that it was already colonized. In 1770, on the HMS Endeavour, Captain Cook and his crew sailed west into the Pacific where they arrived and observed Tahiti. Cook later opened sealed orders that instructed him to sail south and head for signs of the continent Terrus Australis. He next settled in New Zealand and mapped out the coastline and he communicated with the Maldi with the help of the Tahitian priest. After that, he headed west and reached the coast of Australia by the 19th of April, 1770. By the 29th of April, Cook and his crew first stepped on the shore at Silver Beach on Botany Bay. They stayed there for a week exploring and collecting specimens. Cook sought to establish relations with the indigenous, but without success. Over the next few months, he journeyed north and continued on his exploration. On the 11th of June, the ship was nearly lost as it ran aground on the Great Barrier Reef and they were delayed for seven weeks. So during this time, they encountered locals peacefully until an argument over green sea turtles occurred and Cook ordered shots to be fired and an Aboriginal was injured. So during this time, he had claimed eastern parts of Australia for the British Crown, naming it New South Wales. By the 12th of July, 1771, Cook and his crew returned to England. So it wasn't until 18 years later, the British sent 11 ships of British colonists and convicts to Australia, called the First Fleet, for two reasons. The decision to establish a colony in Australia was due to the need to establish a base in the Pacific to counter the French expansion, and also due to the American Revolution, where there was no more transport of criminals to North America, and the Brits just needed to get rid of them. So on the 26th of January, 1788, the first fleet, who was captained by Arthur Phillip, sailed into Port Jackson, marking the beginning of the British settlement. And this is why Australia Day is celebrated on the 26th of January. It wasn't until the 7th of February, 1788, did a British flag actually be planted upon the shore after the possession of the land had been formally proclaimed. The British government had ordered a friendly establishment between Aboriginal people, and Captain Phillip had ordered his crew to be friendly, but unfortunately, conflict soon began when the colonists did not sign a treaty with the original people of the land. Between 1790 and 1810 there was a series of attacks between colonists and the local people which is why today many Aboriginal people call Australia Day a day of mourning. So on January 26, 1888 it had been marked the Cemetery of European Settlement though celebrations were mixed as the date is more associated with New South Wales than it is other colonies. There were six British colonies that were spread out across Australia from Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania and WA. So originally the states celebrated their own days to acknowledge their own foundings such as Regatta Day, Queensland Day and Foundation Day. Each government had their own laws and taxes and caused a lot of problems between them all. So between 1889 and 1901 the government argued and urged for a federation and on the 5th of July 1900 the British government passes the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act. Though other states had already held their own referendums and voted on the constitution it wasn't until the 31st of July that Western Australia which is also known as the way to wild state finally held their referendum and approved. On the 1st of January 1901, the Commonwealth of Australia was proclaimed and officially stating us as a nation with a ceremony at Centennial Park in Sydney. The constitution is a set of rules of how Australia should be run. It includes details on how the government and high court should adhere to and also includes the rights of citizens and also the Religious Freedom Act. It wasn't until 1935 
the date of the 26th of January, finally was selected to hold Australia Day. The first protest actually happened in 1935 and was held by the Australian Aborigines League to be called the Day of Mourning, as it's also a date where white people took their land. Some states would hold their day on the Friday before a weekend, racing a long weekend at the end of January, but it wasn't until 1988 that it was held specifically on the 26th of January only. Whether day is protested as Invasion Day or the Day of Mourning, Australia Day means something else to many of other people. Australia is a new growing country that accepts immigrants from all over the world. Citizenship ceremonials are commonly held on that day, marking this day as an extremely important to many people. It's a day that many people have become Australian. It is okay to reflect on the past wrongs toward Indigenous people, but it's also okay to be proud of a nation that's moving forward. We are one, but we are many. We're a country that values mateship, equality and loyalty, and we live in one of the most unique, diverse parts of the world and have learned to overcome many struggles. And I am one that I'm proud to call Australia home. The Happy Australia Day. And if you want to see some more things that are pretty unique about Australia, come check out this video here where I go over to some of the unique Aussie animals that you can come across if you come to Australia and visit. Bye.